and give subscribe to the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
and some have never won a nationwide race. Jimmy Johnson's won two nationwide races. So how are these they, people saying that Dylan isn't certified to be yeah. there? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, he was doing a little uh, ricochet pull playing out there with but some of the guys. Look at him. I mean, he got loose if, on one of them. A lot of that yeah. was air, I think, with Dylan. He did get into some people, but look at Harvard. How many SNSs was he tied in with? So I mean, it's it's, it's going to happen. It it's it's the fans and the media making the news. Well, yeah, you got to stir it. you got to stir it up. You don't know nothing about that, do you, Jack? No, I don't stir nothing. Up. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but I mean, you got to see both sides. Get that big spoon and hide it that's in your back pocket. Being real about it, though, without the fans, without that churn, without that media report, we don't have a sport. Well, so right. that's it's a double part sorry. of the sport, you know. And that's but Austin's a good kid, and, and, and I like him, and he's funny, and he's having fun. Actually, I seen the day where he had posted where he was it was all in, and and he's hugging people in the shop. Until they feel awkward, <laughs> they're, they're recording. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I come in and do that to Jack on the next week. <laughs> no, we're not going that far. Uh, well, be no. thankful, Mark's in between you. Then. But it was an all, in, all in all, it was it was a good race. I thought it was pretty pretty decent race, and a lot of good storylines. Landon Castle finishing twelfth. Yeah, look at the Labonis. Yeah, I, I, know, them, I didn't think they were going to be in it to the last lap of the qualifying race. Yeah, they were out there for a while. Some that some one point they were in the top ten. I mean, yeah. They, you know, yeah. So yeah. I think Bobby got up to his highest fifth place. Yeah. Well, they were they pushing each other there for a while. Yeah, they were they were hanging together most mm -hmm. of the way. It, it was a daytime of hour. I mean, <laughs> you get through speed weeks. And and this is kind of how I, this is how <laughs> I get through. You get through speed weeks, you get that out of the way, and let's go racing. Mm -hmm. It kind of kicks off, and, uh, and it's it's bittersweet. It kicks off short track racing across America. If you really stop and look at it, that's. Mm -hmm. That's the kickoff, you know. So I take it we didn't get a hold of. I got his voicemail, but I texted him, told him call in. Okay. Well, we'll still go ahead with Mark. We'll go ahead with Mark. Yeah, we'll come back to Mark again. Yeah. What we'll is just tell Lee just only gets two or three minutes. <laughs> yeah. What's What's 2014 got in store for you this year? Well, we. Uh, wait a minute. Where's the donuts? Yeah, you forgot the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they just fun. don't know me. Every morning when I get up, it's, it's a joke. Do you get uh, tired of donuts? No. And <laughs> Good answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought about it after I said it. Hey, look, at Kinley, I went to their truck at Kinley. <laughs> oh, he has Cups of Joe, donuts. donuts. Yeah, but, but I didn't get none. I, you know, I was, I was, I'm not going to go up there. I don't think you had one. <laughs> hey, Jack, I don't think we needed any anyway. <laughs> but that, I can't say nothing. Dale Moore, there at Southern Nashville, brought me a whole box of Krispy Kremes. So... <laughs> so when I come around you next time, mm, well, hey, this is I, of course some guy the only one he picks on. There's some guy like him over there that has Johnny Rockets as a spot. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that one right? thing that a lot of people just like what we were just talking about don't don't really understand. Duncan's concerned about Krispy Kreme, but believe it or not, Krispy Kreme is not really a competitor. Mm. Dunkin' Donuts' main competitors right now are McDonald's. And Starbucks, mm -hmm. their goal is in the coffee, mm -hmm. and yeah. they pride their coffee. America runs on donuts. It's not the donut. Don't get me wrong. That's part of them. But they but you gotta have something. They pride the themselves on the coffee, <laughs> and you know it's more than just a donut shop. They have great flatbread sandwiches. They have great breakfast sandwiches. They're gluten free. They have. Uh, I see why you they can get, this you guy. Can get a turkey. <laughs> you can get a turkey egg, turkey and egg white. Breakfast sandwich, and it's not. If you want to be bad, you can be bad, but you can be bad anywhere you go. You can walk yeah. into Walmart and buy a dozen Snicker bars, yeah. but you can also walk in there and buy a bunch of oranges. You know, mm -hmm. so it. You know, they they got good croissants. I, I go by there sometimes and give me a sausage and anything. Now you I sold, do, you sold me. Now, now when I'm all, I'm gonna I'm go to Dunkin' Donuts. What? Well, give it a shot. Stuff. I mean, but you know, if you if you're if your thing is the other brand, then that's your choice. But we really would like to sell coffee, and. Uh, Believe it or not, they are number one in coffee sales in the United States, and a lot of people don't really <laughs> realize that, but you can look that up online. It's a fact. And, uh, well, I think it's probably more Dunkin' Donuts than definitely more than Krispy Kreme. And mm -hmm. they just, yeah, well, Dunkin' Donuts is nationwide, right? <clears throat> yeah, they're Krispy nationwide. Krispy just here in the East Coast. They're nationwide. Yeah. They just expanded to the uh, west coast of California, meaning all the way right on the coast. They're up to and Alaska yet? It, well, they haven't got there. They they are opening franchises in 
Europe now, uh -huh. and they're they're getting ready to be global. So. It's See, we uh, got off the racing thing. We're back to the food stuff. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. 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 Who needs yeah. out there? Yeah. 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 But this does roll into yeah. uh, the fact that they did renew with us again for the sixth year, which is something we pride ourselves in big. Mm -hmm. in, you know, big with, with our t with being a local short track Saturday night deal, it, it's hard to get a sponsor, an advertiser, period. And when you are able to obtain a national sponsor, or a regional sponsor. Mm -hmm. the, the, getting it is hard in itself. Keeping it is even harder. Because once you get it, you got it by selling them a storyline, a mm -hmm. pitch. So they have to digest that and deal with it for that first year. From there on, they have data to go by. Mm -hmm. And they, if yeah, it's not worth it, the storyline doesn't work anymore. So. Getting it and keeping it has been something I've really prided myself on, and I, I try to make myself an ambassador for them. We, we're doing a grand opening this Saturday, 10 to 1, at Nickerson Plaza here in Hampton, and uh, we you know, cover all their grand openings in Richmond. Uh, I've been to Roxborough, uh, Nags Head, uh, Martinsville right there at the Melmart when they moved into the Melmart there just up from the track. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, now you carry the car and do yes, do that. And, and it, it, one thing we were able to do is work in when we traveled a certain. I, we got a mileage chart. If we have to travel a certain distance out of this area, uh, they will help me with fuel and lodging if if need be. But uh, it's really been a good uh, opportunity for us to meet more people, and mm -hmm. it, it it gets a it gets get yourself my exposure. fan base up. By doing these openings, kids come up and, you know, it's a good interaction for the community. And it's also helped us obtain other sponsors because other sponsors, when they see you're affiliated with a reputable brand, mm -hmm. it, it's like getting a, a, an approval rating. If they, if they think if it's okay for these guys, then it must be all right to represent us. Yeah, and then you doing the shows also helps those those smaller sponsors. And and that's another thing, you know, it's just like right here, Old Spice, if if you know they did a car outing at uh, Office Depot, everybody's still seeing Old Spice. Right. Also, so everything you do helps every sponsor or advertiser that's on the car help us uh, get CMIT Solutions and uh, Taylor Waste and Superior Pond that we had, and it's helped helped us uh, with the paint companies that help us and, and the products you know the product sponsors are as valuable as dollar sponsors because it's sure. money you don't have to spend yeah. so uh, you know with Brad Penn Racing Oil helping us and uh, Dirt Gloss and uh, even though we don't actually get dollar bills you know at the beginning of the year I called Bill Bailey who <clears throat> owns Dirt Gloss he started it himself and now he's global but I, I'll say Bill you know First thing, you never assume. You always ask. Sure. And, and I'll say, can I be honored to carry your name on the car again this year? And he says, absolutely. And then he'll say, what do you need? And I'll say, well, this is what I'd like to have. You, I'll give you a list, and you can take away from it what you think is excess. Mm -hmm. And within two days, we get a freighter truck pull up with car polishes, waxes, and cloths. And, you know, mm. stuff, believe it or not. Cleaning up the collar, getting ready for a show, all that stuff is stuff I don't have to run down to the local sure. store right. and buy. It's still money. So it, it helps in the long run. It helps the team financially. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, I'd, I'd rather have a bunch of small sponsors and fill the car up than not have anything. That that's the thing I focused on years ago. A lot of people were going after that. What I used to call the the, the big kill, and they were trying to get the big one sponsor and. I knew then when I was starting out that I, I couldn't do that. I didn't have a lot to offer. I had to work for it. So I started just trying to put small packages together. And over the years, I found that selling those small packages has been a whole lot easier than selling a big package. What you do and hope is that you sell the small package and work on growing that right. package. So Duncan, I can tell you, has, has tripled their, their money from day one. Though. And that and that you? that was a goal, and you know every year you hope it it, it, it keeps going. But 
uh, you know, Bayport Credit Union when they started helping me. They they've they've reached the ceiling. And they've told me that, but they've increased a little, and that's just you know you don't when you're representing somebody and you got their hat on or their shirt on or their logo on your car, you can't act like a fool because you what? may you may be mad, and we all have talent, yeah, yeah. but you may be mad and you may want to just walk down and punch somebody in the face. But when the minute you do that, the first thing that happens is all the people that you offend say, I'm not going to Dunkin' Donuts. Right. Just because he did that. Yeah, and you're so right. And, yeah. and it, 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 that little stuff yeah. matters. It's that thing about being their spokesperson. <clears throat> and that's what it yeah, all boils down to. an ambassador for that company. All right, well, we're going to come back to you in a minute. we got another person on the line here. So remember how to do it? Joy, how you doing? Doing great, man. Alright, you got this is Jack and you got Mark Wirtz and Scott Allen and Roger Brim here tonight to talk with you. How's everything going down your neck of the woods? Man, it's going great. Every day it's uh, waking up from this dream a little bit by a little bit and uh, getting to work here. Well tell us a little bit. I know you got some got some big news coming up. Go ahead and tell us what the deal is and what you got going on. Yeah, we've been talking with uh, Mike Peterson with Peterson Motorsports for the last, I don't know, six, seven months, and we finally hit on something that worked, and, um, you know, he decided to give a, an old guy a chance, uh, 34 years old, so we are going to uh, start our uh, relationship at Mobile and uh, head over to Salem after that, and we're uh, hoping to have a good piece for Talladega. We got a, we got a car bringing out from Michigan. It's an old children's car that, uh, matter of fact, Boyer uh, won a last race in at Daytona. I guess in 2009, we're going to be bringing that car out there, and we're hoping to have some children's horsepower in that car and uh, give us a chance to be extremely competitive. So we're looking forward to that one big time. So are you looking forward to doing the rest of the season in the ARCA, or, are you, or is it just going to be um, certain races? Well, that, that's something we've talked about, and, and, you know, if you ask Mike and, and the rest of us, we all want to do it all year long, and, and that's kind of what our goal is, uh, but, you know, the biggest thing is sponsorship that, that every driver has to go through, and uh, we're searching for that um, uh, right now to, uh, you know, make some of these things happen, but I'm pretty confident, I mean, regardless, these two cars run every single weekend, uh, the Zero and the Zero Six, uh, so we've got a lot to work with right there just with that fact. Uh, that these race cars go regardless without sponsorship. So uh, hopefully we'll get to do a lot more. Uh, that's the plan, at least. All right, now for people who don't know who you are and where you come from, give us a little background on you and, and, and where you got started in racing. Well, uh, my 21st birthday, I'd always wanted to race. My granddad was in racing. Uh, it was with Bo Anthony, who's a local Alabama race car driver. He's in the Hall of Fame down here. And... Um, Anyways, he gave me the bug at a young age, and uh, unfortunately he passed away before we could do something together, so it took me quite a while to kind of pull it together, you know, funding everything in my, myself, so uh, at 21, instead of going to the bars and, and going out partying, I went to a junkyard and bought a Buick Regal out of, a, out of the junkyard, and uh, it was a race car I'd raced at some point in the hobby class, but uh, we took it out there and had a leather bucket seat and a piece of steel down the side of my roll cage. <laughs> and uh, I had to take the battery out of my truck to uh, put in the race car so we could race. We'd take the battery out, put it back in the truck so we could get home. Uh, that's how we started, and um, had some fun with that. I mean, it was so primitive. It was real grassroots racing, and that's, I guess, me in a, in a nutshell. It's just a grassroots guy. We don't come from a lot of money. We got a ton of heart. If you measure that, we're a multi-millionaire. But uh, from there, we went over to uh, doing some dirt late model stuff, did some super late model stuff, and... Uh, went out on the own own team for a little while, but uh, just didn't see the uh, the sense and all that with well, the amount of money you got to spend. But um, went over to do some uh, racing school stuff. I uh, worked for a company out of Kansas for a couple of years and uh, settled in at Dale Jarrett Racing Adventure in 2008. I've uh, been a racing instructor there since then. And, you know, our home track's Talladega Super Speedway. Um, our race shop's right off the back stretch there. We've got about 20 race cars in the bar. And, uh, sit in the right seat. I've been there for a long time. Uh, obviously, we get to drive the cars a good bit. I've uh, been at most of all the racetracks. I've been at Daytona, so really looking forward to that test next year uh, to kind of complete my my goals of hitting Daytona in 2014. 
So is it being your test, do you uh, drive at Talladega, is that why you're looking for Talladega uh, on the schedule coming up? Well, I think it, that's, that's a little bit of a reason. I mean, we talked about this last night on another broadcast. I mean, we have a, have a ton of laps there, obviously. And, and um, you know, Mike seems to think if you take everything I've done, you know, we've got the expense of 100 races um, under our belt. But Talladega is a very special place, obviously. I'm from Alabama. Um, you know, it's our home track. Uh, Mr. Peters from, Peterson's from Alabama. So, uh, and, and on top of that, the car we have and the package we have for Talladega is, uh, I guess that's the most exciting part that we have. Uh, just getting ready to go out there with that thing and see what we can do and, and get up front. Do you guys get to do any drafting in that, though? All right, Dale Jarrett. No, do you guys get to do any drafting uh, running to school at Talladega? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every morning we warm, we warm the cars up. Uh, we do a lot of promotional videos and stuff like that. Um, I guess the last time I was up there, we had eight cars, nose to tail, about 170 mile an hour, uh, with GoPro cameras on them and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, we've gotten, I mean, you, you pretty much get to do it all uh, when you're up there. Uh, obviously, we have limits to how far we take them, but um, our customers, they come up there and um, a six lap driver comes up and he'll, he'll turn 170, 175 mile an hour. I want to try that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it's fun, but I mean, it's pretty neat to get some drafting experience. Yeah, that'd be pretty well, cool. Yeah, we got a ton of, you know, Charlotte, I just got back from Phoenix a few weeks ago. Uh, what an amazing racetrack that was. That was something me and Mike, uh, Mr. Peterson, were really excited about getting to go over there to kind of help what we're doing with our short track stuff, but I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of glad to be back to the left side of the seat, uh, the right side, after doing this for so long, you guys can only imagine some of the things that I've seen and been through. I don't think it'd be scary. Running, they think it's crazy running 43 cars inches off of each other. Uh, I, I've beaten that, believe me. By myself, if somebody drives me around Talladega, it doesn't only count to it. <laughs> well, did, with, um with this Peterson racing that you're going to be working with. Give us a little background on them. I've, I've not heard of them, so give us a little background on them. Yeah, Mike and uh, Mr. Peterson, and they've been in the sport for quite some time. Um, I know last night, uh, learning a little bit more about the team as we go, but uh, Justin Allgaier is driven for the team, David Reagan. Um, they, uh, this weekend, or last weekend, they of the zero car, I believe, finished 19th. Uh, the 06 had some motor troubles toward the end of the race. Uh, I, think, I think they finished 23rd, but uh, they're based out of Pulaski, Tennessee, and uh, Mike Peterson lives down here with us. Uh, he's actually in Hoover, which is not too far from me here. Uh, we just commute up to the race shop, and uh, matter of fact, we'll be heading up there next week to kind of get some things ready to go for Mobile. Well, it sounds like you got a you, you got a lot going on right now and getting ready, and I know you're happy to get started racing. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's kind of hard to, to put in words where we're at right now. Um, you know, for anybody to take a chance on me right now, you know, um, in racing ages at 34, you're done. Um, you know, nowadays you got to be 12 to be a race car driver, and you know, obviously you got to have a boatload of money behind you. But uh, that's the great thing. I think that it should speak volumes of, of who Peterson Motorsports is, and I want to get that name out there as much as I can. Um, because they are the kind of people, and they're great people, to take a chance on a guy like me and to uh, to give me a chance to live my dream uh, of being a race car driver. I've known all my life what I want to do, and, and I know I can do it to, to the highest level. It's just getting that opportunity, and, and I tell you what, again, special people to do that for me. And I want to thank them and, and do everything I can to help that program and get Peterson Motorsports out there. Um, we're, we're obviously not like the other ARCA teams, some of the, you know, they're kind of affiliated and stuff like that. But I tell you what, you won't get a better bang for your buck with this team. So anybody out there listening, uh, real fast, we, we got a, a deal going right now at, uh, uh Mobile and Salem. It's kind of a, a dual package sponsorship there. It's, uh, $7,000. Uh, you're on the car as the, uh, primary sponsor for Mobile, Salem. And then we're actually going to take you and move you to an associate sponsor on the car for Talladega. Also going to throw in four pit passes for Mobile. That's going to be a wrap race car and everything with your name on it. Uh, just kind of something I wanted to do, and, and Mr. Peterson allowed me to do it, throw out something that low, uh, and, and to get with the company, more or less just to celebrate what we're doing. Uh, my first start, um, it's going to 
going to be a very special day for me. I can't wait to uh, share it with somebody else. Well, Joey, I've been keeping up with you the last little bit, as you know, and I, I wish you the best. I hope you. I hope everything works out real good, and you, and you get a real good finish down there. Yeah, I thank you for having me on, and uh, you know, just look for us zero zero six car in the Arca series and uh, Peterson Motorsports. I uh, thank y'all very much. All right, man. We'll we'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. All right, man. Kick him to the curb today, huh? Well, we got we got Mark sitting here, and we just got started with him. I figured it'd be a good idea to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we asked you about 2014 and what you got going on. Are you going to be running just completely at Langley, or are you going to be venturing out to other places? Or you know, I think 2014, considering I'm going to be 45 years old tomorrow, and that's not old. No, no. we're not washed up. <laughs> so. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I hate old, to say I'm, it. I'm older than that. I was I was uh, older. I was challenging for a, na a regional NASCAR titles at his age. So mm -hmm. I mean I know he's an ARCA car, but I'm not going to fall into it. We're getting old and washed up. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I'm just trying to get that. You're not buying that. I'm not right. buying that because I still feel like a 12 year old. But anyways, hey, you got Morgan Shepard still out there. What the heck? Right. There you go. And he's but older than me. We uh and you. We're Barely. slated to possibly. Uh, this could be the busiest season I've had ever. Uh, and, you know, this is going back compared to the years when I was running dirt. We ran Friday night at Dixieland, Saturday night at Southampton, and Sunday at Saluda. Mm -hmm. Had two cars, ran three nights. and then, uh, But <clears throat> we've uh, partnered up uh, with Amy Wells Racing uh, in a modified and uh, have gone through this car extensively and really have a nice piece and uh, have Junior Keen over Keen's Performance in Smithfield build us a really nice, uh, wow, of a motor. Mm -hmm. And our late model programs kind of take, you know, we kind of took a shot in the arm. We, uh, we've we got a uh, uh, new breath of life in our engine program. Uh, we've got on a different shock program. And uh, it started showing there towards the end of the year at Kenley and uh, when it, we had Danny Edwards Jr. driving the car for us, uh, we were of eight Langley cars down there. We we mm -hmm. ended up racing and being the fastest one there, and and competitive. And yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to this year at Langley with some uh, upgraded equipment, and we're moved into a new shop. We uh, my car owner uh, Raymond Robinson bought uh, Horsepower Solutions on Whitbrook Road. And we've turned that uh, 80 by 120 building into our new race shop, and uh, it's just it's it's like a little bit of rejuvenation, and you know we're excited, and we're going to take the uh, late model, and the weekends we don't run the late model, we're going to run the modified, and uh, we've got eight races slated with the modified, and we're going to run the the Hamlin Short Track Showdown, we may be in Kenley in two weeks, and uh, South Boston in three. And start the year off at Langley, and you know, hit motor mile and a couple races. So you gonna, gonna hit them all for the? Well, fortunately, I mean, we have the backing, and I have a car owner who is uh, who loves racing, and you know, I couldn't, I can't, I can't take credit for anything I'm doing uh, other than just the, the hours we work and, and the time we spend on the cars. It, but if it wasn't for his efforts and his love for the sport. And uh, his desire to not be worried about his bank account going in downwards. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're fortunate to to race, and, and I know it won't last forever. So we, you know we're enjoying it. And he just turned eighty Monday, right. and uh, he he's a trooper. He just loves racing. And uh, his wife passed away last year this time, and uh, without the old cars at the shop that he works on. And the race team, you know, he would, he wouldn't be doing a whole lot. So uh, we're like his second breath of life and family, and uh, it's just been a great partnership. And you know, uh, he bought the team out. I owned the team, uh, and in 2004, ironically, or 2002, uh, we had great equipment. It, I couldn't afford to race. The, the sport had turned to where you had to have good engines, you had to have good shocks, you had to buy practice tires, and, and, and it wasn't like it was when we started in my 1974 Torino. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin Recca bought us out. I drove for Recca Motorsports. We won two NASCAR titles. 
and then he got burnt out on racing and was focusing more on retiring and we were done and then the colonel stepped up and said you know we were already working out of his shop and he said can we just keep the cars here and i was like what are you talking about and he said i'm just gonna buy the team and keep everything going the way it is and for now i've been fortunate and blessed and we're here today still racing that's good <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're going to do the Martinsville, the we the may big, we're a big race at Martinsville. You know, I've, I've raced a lot at Martinsville, and I've been in the race and made the race and run good. And uh, I love that track, but it stresses me out. I don't, the whole <laughs> the whole procedure of worrying about making the race and and and, and worrying about rain when you're down there on, on a five thousand dollar weekend with tires and hotel bills and crew pit passes of food knowing if it rains out that's it probably for this year and mm -hmm. as as far as that race it, it's it, after you've done it a couple of times it, it's you've done it. It, you've done it and and I've gotten to the mindset where for a race like that if I'm not just a dominant car where I race every week mm -hmm. I don't need to be there because I don't need to go to races anymore to just say I'm racing or I did that. Mm -hmm. Now, if I start the year off here and we're just kind of like informed like we were from 2003 through 2008, then we may consider it. Because then you feel like you got a good shot. And late model is, the, the face of late model racing has changed a lot too. There's a lot of teams that we're competing against on a weekly basis that have cup technology mm -hmm. down at our level. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I've done everything I could to keep my fingers dug into what little bit I can get and I think that's helped me stay competitive. We we had quite a few good runs last year. It's just uh it's it, when it comes to races like Martinsville, it's just you, you gotta know the best of everybody. Yeah, and you gotta know when you go there that I can lose this race car. Meaning well, yeah. meaning I can that's given any weekend, but I can lose it and not worry about it. That's the mindset I want to be able to go back with. Cause they they tear up a lot of cars out there. And you can tear up a car anywhere, but you know you go a little faster. And when you hit the wall there yeah. at the end of the straightaway, you you pretty much killed a car. Yeah. And uh, you know I killed one in two thousand five. A hundred percent. I mean, I broke the steering box in half. That's how bad we wrecked. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the wrecker picked it up, the rear end fell out in two pieces. It was, and we were running ninth. Challenging for eighth with 32 laps to go. You know, that late in the race, you think you, right. you're there. You, you're bringing it home. And still, the big one happened. And, uh, but as far as racing, you know, we're looking forward to the modified and uh, we're looking forward to the late model and getting out there with old friends. And I'm looking forward to <laughs> sitting in the seat again after the shoulder surgery. And I've been real aggressive in uh, therapy trying to get it back ready to go. Well, how hard was it when you went to, went to Kenley to let somebody else drive your car? It's always hard to let it, you know, there's there's an old saying that racers have, and a lot of people can appreciate it, and a lot of people may think, that, ooh, that's that's too slang, but uh, to let another guy drive your race car is like somebody sleep with your wife. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's hard. But fortunately, Danny Edwards Jr. and myself are, are really good friends away from the racetrack, and his ability speaks volumes. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it just... When we went to the emergency room and my shoulder was out of place, I, we had to leave in two days to go race. And I asked the doctor, I said, is this a deal where you're going to reset it and I'm going to be good? And he said, absolutely not. And uh, I told Bill Diggs while we were sitting in the emergency room, called Danny, it was 9.30 at night. And uh, he said, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And I said, we just loaded the car up. I, I hurt myself falling off the hauler loading the car up. And, and uh, he said, well, we're, I'm supposed to go hunting. He said, I don't know, let me think about it. And I said, all right, well. Give me a break. Hunting? Let me know. Racing? Well, well, racing. I, I said, let me, well, it was a family thing he had planned. Uh -huh. So we hung the phone up, and uh, I didn't even make it 30 seconds, and he was calling back saying that he's in. But it, it's just, it, that made it easier, being that we're that good of friends, and I knew that he would race the equipment like it was his and take care of it with pride, not just go out there and. Well, Danny's going to tear stuff up. Accidents happen. It, if somebody tears up your car, racing hard, and doing what they're supposed to do, 
that's one thing. But if somebody goes out there and tears your car up due to negligence, that's another thing, and I knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it worked for the best. It actually gave our team good feedback, and uh, it was good to hear from another driver, too, that a, the engine program we're on now has improved because he was the one that had drove driven our car before when I broke my ankle and uh, was honest and said our engine program was horrible. And and to hear him be back in the car and then come back and say, well, it's a whole lot better. That so what all did you change in your engine program as far as? We just got back, uh, compared a lot, of, I was real open with my engine builder just and told him that, you know, right now this is where we're struggling and this is what we're being told and this is what the chassis diamond finally said. And, and but sometimes it can be hard because you, you haven't been you in other people's cars, so you don't really know Right. you have something to compare and it to. And you don't want to hurt your relationship with your engine builder. No. Either. So, you know, the, the good thing about Charles at Performance Counts is that I've been brutally honest with him over the years, and, some, and most of the time it's been great. This time it was a situation that might have hurt some feelings. But on the flip side, we didn't do the easiest thing. We didn't just turn around and go to another engine builder. We stuck through this blow. We worked through it together. A couple things changed in how he's doing things and parts that we're using, and we got through it. And in the end, he saw the loyalty in us mm -hmm. to not just run somewhere else, and which a lot of people will do. A lot of people do jump ship. They're to ready to go yeah. when they, anybody can leave you when it's bad, and um, takes a team to stick together when it's, mm -hmm. when it's and bad. I, and I commend you for that because I'm, I'm somebody that's very loyal. I'm, I'm not just because somebody mm -hmm. else says, "Hey, we can do this or do that." You well, know. see, the flip side now though is the reward. A is a better program, and B somebody that's willing to work harder for us mm -hmm. because of what, the loyalty we gave back you know and some it was hard so it's hard <laughs> i mean trust me you're sitting there going man i'm doing the right thing and we're spending this money you know i know what i'm hearing these guys are making but the first thing you got to remember there too is you're not gonna walk in somebody else's door and be on their a program mm -hmm. we've been with these people since the year 2000 so working on 14 years of a relationship and like I say, when you get married, it's for better or for worse. You got to work through all of them. Yeah. And, it, and that's with any adventure you're in business, advertising, you name it, there's highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And the, the true teams and the champions come from the ones in, on how well they handle the lows. Anybody can act well and look well when they're winning, but it's how you act when you're not winning. And that's the key. So, something for you. There is a group that just recently started up in the area called the Mid-Atlantic NASCAR Club. Look them up on Facebook. Get in touch with uh, the admin. She told me that they are looking, a few of the people are looking to get together and put some sponsorship dollars out there on race teams. So. But that's definitely something to look forward to. What and was that? I, 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 he, he's talking real race. I would also, uh, I would, but I'll tell you this: I'd also encourage some of these sponsors not to be afraid to go down to the lower levels because the top guys will do the best we can and and appreciate it. But the lower guys, you can't make it to the top unless somebody helps you get there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these lower lower teams. And the lower divisions need the help as bad, just as bad. And there's the guys that can make a car just as. And, and you can get a lot of bang for your buck with some of those Literally. lower guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Literally, there's a lot of excitement going on in guys. But yeah. don't get me wrong; I'd be love to have it on our car. But yeah. I, you know, I just I well, came since, from that. Since we mentioned that, let's take a short break, and we will be right back. Real short break. I was confused there. I forgot to turn it so you could see it. Would you like to see it again? No. Yeah, we can. We can do it's that. Not, it's, not it's not hard. hard. Joe is getting better. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I appreciate you showing up. Today we have a commercial. <laughs> Oh, that's right. We had it last week. We had it last week. You weren't here. You weren't here, though. Well, I was here last week. We didn't well, have we a commercial. Yes, I did. You didn't run it last week. Yes, I did. 
Yeah, you must not have told us because we must talk to it. Well, yeah, we must have. <laughs> I didn't ever do nothing about it. Well, I knew for sure I wasn't going to miss this one because Rod's been trying to get me in here a couple times. And it, it seems like every, it's like, every time he's called, I have legitimately have something going on. And I just, uh, we got this one together and I said, you know what, I'm going to make it. It's fun one. now, I'm here. <laughs> just, no, Mark is going to say, no, it's fun now, he's here. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, Mark will tell you, back last time he was here, we were doing it out front on the display cases in the main you know, lobby. Yeah, Pierce was here that day. Yep. Um, he, I hadn't heard from him. I thought he was going to be here. But no, he had to go to Phoenix because he probably wouldn't have been here. Yeah, that's probably you. We talked to Richardson. Yep, Robert. Yep. And uh, I was surprised because at the end of the last year, he told me it looks like they were going to sell off everything. He wasn't going to go racing. Next thing you know, he's popping up in the Nationwide Series and... Yeah, well, sometimes different. the team restructures. I mean, there's, you know, it's doom and gloom at the end of the year when you've had a bad year and your your, your spirits are down. And you know, sometimes the best thing to do is walk away like door shop and take a week <laughs> off. Yeah. And, I, yeah. I need to give him a call because I noticed the 23 car in the Cup Series is now Alex uh, uh, Bowman, Bowman mm -hmm. was running it. So I don't know if that's still Robert's stuff or I don't no, know. That's no, BK that's BK Race. Yeah. Oh, BK Race. Well, they must have bought the number from him then, or bought the number. Period. Well, tell us a little bit now. You you said you run at Southampton. I ran at Southampton. Tell us a little bit about your Southampton experience. <laughs> well, dirt or asphalt? Either one. I mean, I was dirt. Well, the dirt races I ran at, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a real, this is a good story on being cheap. <laughs> <laughs> this is where sometimes it doesn't pay off to be cheap. We went there one night and took our Dixieland car. And there was already a number 14 there. And uh, we had qualified, and he had qualified me. And they told me, you got to change your number. And I, I was like, I'm not changing my number. You know, I'm there on a night with a 1977 Chevrolet pickup truck with rust holes. You can see the road going by. You know, the trailer barely made it there. Wheel bearing, smoking, pulling in the parking mm -hmm. lot. You know, I'm like, I don't have the money. I can't. I wanted to take this money to get up. I didn't buy a roll of duct tape. I outran the guy. He actually ended up finishing 12th or 13th. I finished third, and they scored him third because <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was number 14, and I refused to change my number. <laughs> and they said it was him, not me. And from that day said, on, you're gonna learn I said, day. you know what? I just learned a lesson. <laughs> and it made a difference. You ain't win. It made a difference in three hundred dollars. I was hot. <laughs> you know. So but that's a true story. That's and, uh, pretty good. But in ninety seven now we showed back up with a, uh, our asphalt car and uh won open at night and uh went on a terror. We won fourteen of seventeen races and I won a championship. Good. And mm -hmm. then uh drove Donnie Harris's late model and the uh, big uh, what they call it back then? It was the oh yeah, the yeah. But anyways, they took a picture of us all lined up down the front straightaway. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin and Wayne Grubb, Philip Morris, Jay Fogelman. Yep. I mean, this is the primo crop now. We mm -hmm. had a late model race. It was yep. unreal. You know, Jimmy Johnson was there in the in the Hendrick yeah. Chevrolet late yeah. model, and he didn't run very many races before they moved him right along. But. Um, Got my opportunity. To, we ran ninth in that race. I was driving for Donnie Harris, and uh, then we uh, came back in '02 with a modified, won Rookie of the Year then, and uh, I was done. It was uh, had the car, had the equipment, but didn't have the money to keep racing. And that's when uh, the you know, wheels started turning with my car owner. And uh, I, I gotta say this. Uh, I've had one guy to stick with me since high school. It's uh, another area where I've been fortunate to save money is uh, get your car painted. And uh, <laughs> I can't paint worth a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've tried to paint. And there ended up with more paint on the floor than on the car because mm -hmm. it would run off. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, they said make it look wet. I did. <laughs> but they put a safety board around the car. So, uh, Eric, that's like something we used to do. Uh, my buddy Eric Buckley, was, uh, we, we call him Buckley. He, uh, I'll call him up on moments notice. I got the car ready to paint, got the paint in the back room, heaters on, and everything's taped up and sanded. He'll roll in 
My class can, can, can you prime it? Or you I don't do nothing. <laughs> Look, if I can't you stick it on, up, if I can't stick it on, weld it on, rivet it on, I'm not doing it. I can't paint. <laughs> That's all there is. I've tried. Do it by yourself. I've told. You. When when I paint and you move the car, it looks like a crime scene. You know, you roll chalk around. <laughs> and, like, this is where the car was. But anyway, <laughs> Eric's uh, he, he's a top of the notch painter and. Uh, He's actually been part of what's kept our cars looking like show cars, and uh, so yeah, your stuff always looks yeah. good, and you're always posting something about <coughs> Dunkin' Donuts on Facebook. Yeah, always Jack, Jack Pace with aerosol can. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can swing an aerosol can. I did, a, I did a few of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, there's 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 a lot of pieces to the puzzle, and it's uh, any driver that sits there and tells you that it's all of them. They they they're a pompous ass. I mean, can I say that? But yeah. <laughs> they uh, it takes a team. It takes a lot of dedicated people that mm -hmm. that are willing to give up their Saturday nights. That are willing to give up a couple nights during the week to come help a guy who's getting the reward of driving the car. Yeah. And that the hardest thing is to find a dedicated team of guys that don't want to drive. Yeah. And, uh, You're right. It, it, you know, I've had a lot of Navy guys that show up wanting to be on the team and within three or four weeks they're like when do I get to drive and like, well, we already <laughs> got one in the circle track for a while <laughs> well we've already got one of them, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but you know it's 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 a team effort all the way down to the wives and girlfriends at home yeah okay. it's like a drug all right let's go to our next guest Ron mm -hmm. Devine just got kicked to the curb Mark <laughs> <laughs> anything he's used to it by now we'll be back with you <laughs> Mr. Devine, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? This is Jack Dawson, I've got Mark Wirtz and Scott Allen and Roger Brim here tonight and want to get with you and talk a little bit about BK Racing. Okay, what, what, what's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to get a little bit about this year you've made a lot of, you've made a lot of changes. You brought in two new drivers and, and everything. Where did, where did all that come from that you made these changes? Well, First off, the, you're talking about the rookie class. You're talking about Alex Bowman and Ryan Truex. Right, right. And, um, you know, I think we were just looking for a fresh start. I think the, the youthfulness of it was uh, was attractive to us. Um, you know, David Ruderman is a great driver, and, you know, he's, he did a nice, wonderful job for us. Travis is a great driver. In fact, Travis is driving this weekend in Phoenix uh, for the 32 team. Right. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, we were very happy with it. It's not like we parted ways with any anything bad, you know. Um, uh, well, in fact, I think I think they'll both say they had a good experience at BK Racing, but it was just time for us to try, you know, something new and fresh, and and you know, kind of skip a generation, if you would, and see if these new guys can grow with us in the program. So that was our thinking. And then, you know, accidentally the rookie class got bigger and bigger and bigger, and the next thing you know, we're part of the largest rookie class in years. And there's eight of them out there, and uh, so it worked out real well for us. And we're very, very happy with these guys. Um, you know, Ryan, uh, of course, missed the Daytona. That was kind of freaky that we got, you know, we were the bubble boys out of there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of, you know, a bummer. But uh, he's a great driver, and I think he's going to do just fine. And Alex, we took Alex and tested with him, and I'll tell you, he is smooth. You, you wait and see. This, this kid's got something. And he, he's a good wheel man. Uh, you know, if you look at his uh, charts and study him, this guy, this guy's got something. And I'm real excited to watch both of them perform, but I'm real excited to see, uh, you know, uh, Alex get behind the wheel. So I don't know if it was really thinking or just kind of just a fresh start. We're building, you know, new cars, doing all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, we just decided to take a shot at it. So you're kind of, you're moving your program along more and more every year. What kind of changes other than the drivers have you made to, to kind of step the program up some? Well, if you look at our cars, I mean, we, we worked real hard on the car. Now, you know, if you go back in time, and we're, you know, it's our third season, you know, owning like we do. Mm -hmm. uh, the first season we had to do the conversion to the new chassis and, you know, get all that going and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We took the Red Bull cars and made them so that they would run in 12. And so we spent all of our time just doing assembly work, okay? Mm -hmm. And then just barely getting to the track. And by the way, the first year we started, it was, you know, it, it was very similar to that. But, but, but in that middle year there, I mean, we, we really were just assembling to get there. Then you come to the end of that season and they go to the Gen 6 car, and so we had to convert the entire fleet again. We skinned all those cars, made the changes, 
re-sheet metal them all through the winter. And so, you know, we really didn't get to race it. So then when you say, well, what have you done different this year between Homestead and Daytona, we've been to the wind tunnel a half a dozen times. We've tested a half a dozen times. You know, we're not just assembling and building cars. We're actually racing them and testing them. So, you know, big difference. And so what the net effect of that is our cars have gotten a lot better. If you look at all the downforce and center of gravities and all those things it takes to be competitive, our cars are really, really, really good. Now, our motor program, you know, we undertook building our own motors. Right. And that's a big undertaking. These guys are, you know, are great out there that are building these motors. And so we spent this winter trying to get together all those pieces, parts, and, and that's quite frankly where we're focused right now. So I think just being able to test and race and, and, you know, get ahead of it a little bit without having to feel like we were just assembling stuff to get to the tracks, it should pay a benefit from us. And, you know, both of those guys had good cars in Daytona. You know, we were down on horsepower a little bit, but we're working on that. And I think that'll, that will narrow that gap when we get out into the open motors and out into Phoenix and Vegas, and so we'll see how it goes. So how is your how is your sponsorship stuff going? Are you are, are you looking for more sponsorship? And have you got have you got things pretty well locked down for the year? Or what you got going on there? Well, first of all, everybody's looking for more sponsorship. There's no such thing as enough, right? Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, you you spend it when you get it, and you find a way to you know develop when you when you have an opportunity to do that. We have great sponsors, and and I'll I'll bore you to death with a little story. Um, when the 83 didn't make the race, it was with a new sponsor, Borla Exhaust. Right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you're a hot rodder, you know Borla Exhaust. That thing's been around for many, many years. But getting to know Alex Borla, that, that is a quality human being right there. And his products show it. You know, he's a, he, he's a scientist by trade. And so he, he makes those pipes not only sound great, he tunes them like an organ, like a pipe organ. But he, you know develops them for performance and i'll tell you when when you when you put a boiler exhaust system on your car you got something and so we were very excited to have a relationship with him when he didn't make the race i had to go to dr pepper who's also a great sponsor of ours and say you know hey what do you think of this it took him two seconds kelton graham said take us off and put that put the boiler exhaust on there he's brand new with us we wanted to be part of the family and I'll tell you, that, you know, we took those stickers on Dr. Pepper and shrunk them down, chewed up a really, really beautiful race car, and wrapped it with the uh, boiler exhaust uh, wrap, turned the 83 into the 23, you know, put Alex in the uniform, and away they went. And I tell you, so I have to, you know, I want to thank publicly Dr. Pepper for their understanding and, and, and even Burger King for their understanding to let us do it with the vendors and, and bring in outside support like what we're doing. And I want to welcome out, you know, Alex Borla and the Borla Exhaust people to our uh, to our race team. So they're really, really good. And so we're we're vendor based. So you look at Burger King and you look at Dr Pepper and you think about, you know, the Element Financial that's been on our car. Uh, we have Voodoo Barbecue, which is something else in the food family that pulses in, and they they run a uh, an associate sponsorship with us uh, for this year. They sign back up. Um, we've got uh, the Coca-Cola support with product, although we don't run their stickers on the car. Um, and it goes on and on. I can't think of them all right this uh, second, but um, you know, if you if you go down through there, you look at the front lines, which are vendors that sell. They sell grease systems, and so we want to be more vendor-based and get more of those people involved in the program. And that's really going to be our focus this year. Well, you said you're doing a lot of testing and and, and everything. And that's really good for your, your rookie drivers to get a lot of testing, but how, how much more testing will you be doing, like, in the next few weeks? I know with the schedule like it is, it's going to be hard to do, but uh, isn't it kind of hard to get everything turned around? I mean, you're, you're basically a, a, a small team. Yeah, we are. I mean, I, I, I think that's fair. I don't know that we're tiny, but we're small. Right. I, mean, I say they're elephants and mice, and we're just a large mice. You know, <laughs> a mouse. I mean, we want, to be a, we want to be a small elephant at one some point here. But, but let me, you know, specific to your question on testing, you know, we're, we'll be testing in between Phoenix and, uh, and Vegas. They're going to have a Vegas test out there. So now that we're in the season, you know, we'll start doing that. If any opportunity we get to get these guys in a car, we're going to take it. And so we're laying out a schedule now to figure out where we're going to go and, and what we're going to do. Um, and we'll see how the season unfolds. But, yeah, this is a, this is a busy part. This first little piece of the season is, 
is tricky and tough. And so I don't know that we'll be making too many road trips while that's going on. Now you um, you've got a lot of a lot of experience in, in your in your shop with your crew chiefs. Who are all of your crew chiefs? I know you got Doug Richard there, but who else have you got down there with you? So we got Doug Richard, like you say, and you know he was Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s crew chief on his first championship. Um, and what he's doing now is he's doing the development stuff for us um, at the pull down rigs and, and working with Toyota. Out on the road, we've got uh, Dave uh, Winston, and he's. He's great. He was a car chief last year on the uh, uh, one team, and he's, he's been just great. i tell you what, the 23 car from the time it hit Daytona, between uh, him and Patrick Donahue's his, uh, his car mm -hmm. chief, those guys were on top of it. They were out in front of it. They got the tech good, and, I mean, they were, and it showed. I mean, they just they performed really, really well. And then over on the 83, um, you know, you got Dale Ferguson come back with us, and he's an engineer by trade. And, you know, it's be a second year on the box, so we're excited about that. And Joe over there is a car chief. And those guys, you know, they're probably, you know, the more consistent team, or, you know, chock full of the normal people from BK Racing. So they're, they're more solidly based. Um, and I think in general, you know, we'll see them start to gel, you know, this year too. I'm very excited. I mean, they were very disappointed. It took the wind out of their, their lungs to miss the 500. But they're... Uh, they sucked it up. They got their tough chin on, and they're uh, they're heading out to Phoenix. So we'll see we'll see how that goes. But we're real happy with both our crew chiefs. I mean, they they are uh, you know Dale Ferguson and uh, Dave Wentz. I can't say enough about them. Take a chance on a team like us, and you know come out there and try to figure out how to how to win races. Tricky for them. So. With, with all the the new changes and stuff that's going on with with the the Cup cars this year, the new qualifying, the the all this, other, how do how do you feel about all the changes that have been made? You know, you know, I like what NASCAR is doing. They're not, you know, they can't just be stale. They're out there trying to uh, find a way to to make it more user friendly from the fan side of it. They're trying to make it more competitive. Um, I think the adding the uh, half an inch on the spoiler was a, a good move for you know making the cars more drive drivable. I like what they're doing. You know, the qualifying, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work out. We haven't done it yet. So our first shot's here in Phoenix. Uh, but I like the fact that they're making change and, and trying different things. Uh, I think the chase is interesting this year. I mean, it's gotten a lot of play. I mean, you can't fault them for taking a shot at stuff like that. And, and you know, they, they, they admit, hey, we're not going to get it perfect right away, but it's, it's a change and we're going to evolve it. And we're going to, you know, put it out there and try to see if we can, you know, build something for the future. So I actually like what they're doing, and you know, it's a little confusing here and there. It's not what we're all used to, but you know, we'll get through it. We'll figure it out, and you know, compete in it. I guess I want to say one more thing too uh, on the competition side. You know, Mike Ford is with us. Mike Ford was uh, Denny Hamlin's crew chief right. on his, you know, on his championships, you know, and all his run. So I mean, he's he's a solid competitor. He's our director of competition, and I'll tell you, he's he's the nucleus of this team. So when you see us improving our cars and our performance, I mean, you, you got to look back and say, you know, Mike Ford at the shops making it happen there. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like what I what I'm seeing is every year your team moves up just a little bit more. It it, it, it gets a little bit better every year. So so here's what I tell people: in the first year we raced along and we probably got better finishes than where we were racing. Okay, mm -hmm. the uh, you know our cars were maybe in the high 20s, and we we get a you know low 20 place finish, or we get a team finish. And what it was was there was a lot of things wrecking out of the way and stuff like that. The second year, we raced a lot better, but we didn't finish better, and we were in the wreck. It seemed like we were in a wreck every week. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tore up. I'm never torn that much stuff up. I've been running around this stuff since the 60s. I've never torn that much stuff in any that much stuff up in any one year, and I and I got to tell you, when uh, when when that happens, it it is deflating. It takes a real strong people to persevere and do that. But our cars were good. See, and people don't know it and see it because they see us finishing in the 30s and you know even last in a couple of races. Well, that's because we wrecked out of it. It's really it was really a shame because we were racing up in there between 15th and 25th. 
that plays pretty consistently. And, um, and so that hurts. So, so this year, what, what I've been saying is just give us what we got. Just whatever we're racing, let us finish that. If the car is a 20th place car, let it be 20. If it's a 10th place car, let it be 10th. You know, and I'm sure we're going to go through some bumps and bruises with these rookies. But you know what? We're, we're, we're signed up for it now, and we're excited about it. And, you know, we love our relationship with Toyota. They've been working with us great. I think they're excited about our, our driver lineup this year. And, um, you know, Dave Wilson from Toyota has been terrific to work with, and so is all their support team. So I think we got, you know, we got a good mix going on here. Now we just want to get into the season and, uh, and see where it goes. Well, I think you got. I think you got a good guy in Alex Bowman. He he just seems to be a natural at what he's doing. And, and you, you said earlier he was real smooth when he drives, but he seems to have his head on, and he's able to. He he took the RAB cars last year and, and, and did a lot a lot with them compared to what they where they were actually supposedly finishing. Well, that's one of the things that attracted us to. If you look at what he did in Texas when he put that car on the pole. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure they had a good car that day. I got it. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. That that kid is smooth, and he's a good wheel man. I, I'm very, very, very excited to have Alex as part of our program. And, you know, a lot of people talk about people buying rides and all that sort of stuff. We're all sure we want sponsorship, but we didn't require either one of those guys to bring anything to the table. We hired them because we think they're great racers. And we're, that's what we're trying to do is build a race team here. So... Uh, well, well, this may be a question you may not, you know, you may not want to answer, or may not have a good answer for. But how did you work it out with Petty, with Richard Petty Motorsports, to get Ryan Truex over there for y'all for this year? Well, you know, I get, you got to give credit to the, uh, you know, to their handlers and stuff for that. I mean, we were interested in him. He really didn't have a, a ride. Uh, they had him uh, on as a. Uh, uh, you know, a future driver, and they, um, it's good for them, too, to let him come out and uh, be a part of it. There was a lot of, couple tricky things in there, because we wanted to keep an option to him as the future goes on, and uh, and they were very accommodating. I thought they were, uh, they handled that very well. Um, it was part of the contract, and they signed up, and we signed up. We were just able to work out the details. It wasn't, it wasn't as hard from my perspective as, uh, is, as you might have thought. I mean, we just, Ryan went to them and asked, and they did the release, and away we went. So he's been released from that, from the, the Petty Development Program. Yeah, they've given him the, the, the relationship was such that, you know, he was free, if you would, to look around. And then they had, you know, the option to take him back and do that type of stuff. So, yeah, I think all that's worked out. Um, you know, there's been a lot of paperwork about it, but the contract's solid. He's signed up with us for this year, and um, I'm 99% sure we have an option as the season unfolds to sign him up for next year. And I think he's excited about it. You know, when I talk to him, he's, uh, you know, it's a new team, it's a new setup, it's all that stuff. And like I say, we're kind of licking our wounds from the 500. I was so proud of him. He ran fourth in the truck. And, uh, you know, that's a good confidence builder for him. You know, he's, he's a good wheelman. Both yeah. of these guys can wheel a car. You know, and that's what I like. I like guys that have good car control, that are fast, and, you know, we'll give them some experience out there. I think they'll be just fine. Well, I think with the, with the way you're doing it and developing them to go along, it, it may pay greater dividends down the road when they, when they have a, a solid form like you guys have given them to work with. Well, I hope so. I mean, we're going we're gonna to grow this thing together. Um, I think that's a big part of, uh, you know, being successful is to, you know, don't let, the, uh, don't let the challenges in front of us break us. You know, don't let you break your spirit or whatever. And we're going to have issues, I'm sure, along the way. But, you know, I, I think these both, both of these young men are, are, in my opinion, older than their age. They conduct themselves much better than... You know their age. When you when you see them and work with them, if you didn't know how old they were, and you had to guess, you'd guess a number higher than what they are. You know they're both 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So you know when you when you see them like that, you think they're super young and immature, but they're not. They're very mature for for their age, and they're both very very good seasoned drivers as far as you know car control and the things that we look at. So we're very happy with them. Now, do you guys get any technical support besides from Toyota? Like what? 
like from uh, Michael Walter Grayson or something? You have like an alliance with somebody? Well, what happens at Toyota, they their Salisbury plant is where everybody kind of comes back together. So we don't have a technical alliance with Walter for Gibbs like that, but we have access to the Salisbury plant, which is the Toyota, you know, technical group. And so, sort of, but we don't have a direct relationship with uh, Gibbs or Walter. I mean, That's you, what you mean. Yeah, a bit, but you've done pretty well in a short period of time, I would say. You know, I feel like we've out, you know, kicked our punt coverage. I do. I think we've, uh, you know, we've, we've certainly got more out of it than, you know, with the time that we've had in it. Especially, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm up here in the northern Virginia area where it snows every day. And things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you keep it up there. Yeah, well, I'm, we're, it, the good news is now it snows and melts. You know, a couple weeks ago, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't give up. But um, don't worry about some. I'm choking in your Northern Virginia. Show here. But the uh, you know the, the the technical side of this business is is really where it's at as far as repairing the car. You know where we're focused right now is we're focused on that motor, and um, that's a big undertaking. And we're trying to uh, we're trying to hold our own uh, putting that stuff together. So we'll see. Now you said you're up in Northern Virginia. Whereabouts? So, you know where the beltway comes off the bottom, or the 95 comes off the bottom of the beltway around D.C.? Yeah. A little place called Springfield. That's kind of where our office is. And, um, you know, we're uh, born in, in uh, Washington, D.C., but this is kind of home for me. And then uh, the, our shop's in Statesville, and our motor shop's in Concord. Well, we're just about three hours south of you down here in Hampton near Virginia Beach. Yeah, but... How much snow did you get two weeks ago? Well, we got a fair yeah, amount. Yeah, yeah, we got a we had a good we had a good shot. Twelve inches in some spots. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. thought we had moved to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now they're already fussing about everybody's having to make up school days. Oh, the kids in school. What what a great year to be in school. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. They go to school every now and then, you know. So. Uh, but I tell you what, the, I, you know, VDOT did a pretty good job of moving it around, I thought. We were shut down for a, a day or so, but um, I thought they did a good job of cleaning the roads up. They're going to have to fix them when the spring gets here, because we, we've torn up some roads. <laughs> so, but uh, what else you got on your mind? What are you, will I tell you anything you want to know? I mean, I'm, we're very excited to be a part of the sport. You know, I guess I, I didn't say anything about NASCAR, but uh, I don't think they could be any more welcoming. You know, you hear a lot of stuff about how hard it is to get in the sport and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, these guys have been great to work with from my perspective, and, uh, you know, the, you know, guiding us through the minefield, so to speak, and they, uh, you know, they have a good, uh, a good way about them, and, you know, we're trying to fit in with them and be a part of the show and uh, be competitive out there. You know, I'm a competitive guy. I don't, I gotta be honest with you, I, this is not, this is not my idea of, uh, you know, where, where we should be and where we want to be. And at the same time, I have so much respect for the competition that I know how hard it's going to be to break into it. And so we're trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to come up with a competitive approach to it, to, you know, so we can make a difference out there. Uh, you know how that success breeds. And, and I'll tell you, if you want some competition, this is the place to be. These guys are good. So... We respect them. We're not afraid of them, but we do respect them. How uh, how how neat is it to know that you have a rookie driver, and you know, to, to be with with Ryan Truex, to be a rookie in the garage area in any division, and and to not know anybody or not have a close relationship with anybody, you feel like you're on an island by yourself. How cool is it to know that when you know Ryan's having a bad day or a little off? on a corner entry or a corner exit or how he's running the apex to know that he can run down and just, you know, talk to Martin Truex. Well, let me tell you, he saw the qualifiers and the one fifties in Daytona and you know when when we finally got around to him, um, to watch him pick up his brother and push him and what's the first thing Martin Truex said when he walked out of the infield care center? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. he was worried about Ryan. Did yeah. my brother make it? And I gotta tell you something, you know, that all that credit goes to Martin Sr. And his, and his beautiful, lovely wife. I mean, they have raised two terrific young men right there. And, you know, it, it is a comfort. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, to have, to have that type of family and that type of relationship going on, it is, it is a comfort. Well, well, ultimately down the road, that can only benefit you to, you know, to know that on Monday, those two are getting together and talking and, and new ideas could come back in that, hey, you might not have thought of. And you've been in the sport long enough, but there's n n never any lack of room to grow. That's right. You know, it's like any other family. The big brother pioneers it and then the little brother sort of falls in the mm -hmm. wake and then, you know, helps advance the whole setup. So we're, we're you know, I, I do see that as a huge benefit. I'm not sure that we talked about that as much when we were putting it together. Um, it's sort of one of those ancillary benefits, you know, but, uh, but we are very excited to, to, uh, to have uh, at least some sort of a relationship with Mark Jr. Well, I know when Ryan showed up in the late model stock cars, uh, he would come to the tracks and the teams would roll out and, and uh, he, he just carried himself well. So uh, I think you got a good young, bright driver with a good future in your uh, seat there holding the wheel for you. Yeah, but he stays inside himself. You know, he's uh, he he stays in control. He doesn't he doesn't flare up and things like that. So, I'm uh, I'm excited to work with him. I, I look forward to get to know him a little better. And I would say, I mean, kudos to you for taking a chance on a couple of rookies. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that are that are done you know very well for for so far. You know, people say that a lot. You know, and I just again, I I think we've gotten as part of this big rookie class. It just it just happened that way. Um, I didn't worry about it like that. You know, like I said, I, I look at these guys as two really good racers. Um, we were tearing up stuff. I mean, the idea of being, having that senior guy in the car was, you know, to, to help protect that from happening. And you really can't help it. It wasn't our guy's fault most of the time. You know, you just in, if, once you race a little better, you're kind of in that area. And, you know, when it comes apart, it comes apart, and you, you get hung up in it. So, you know, I, I don't think we, we benefited from that you know, more veteran coverage in the car. Um, and again, no knock to them. It wasn't like they were a wreck fest. They just happened to be torn up in it. You know, sometimes you just love with Danica a bunch, and you know, well, we're good TV coverage, but we tore up a lot of sheet metal. Uh, one of the things too to look at, you know, the flip, the positive side to having this big rookie class is, uh, in my mind, it, it makes the value in the stock go up mm -hmm. for a potential sponsor next year for the guy that wins the, the rookie of the year now as opposed to when you win it with two other drivers you know to compete against so right. if you can get your guys up there and then hey you know it just opens the floodgates for you right hey the field's full of young drivers okay some of them out there that were rookies last year you know you go back a couple of years, you, you've got a lot of young people out there on the track right now. So we thought it was a good time from that perspective to, to get into it as well. You know, it's, it's, there's, they say a changing of the guard. I don't know about that. It's, these veterans are, uh, you know, they're pretty good about getting around out there. So I don't know if they're changing the guard or not. But you're certainly seeing the youth start to join. And I think that's good for our sport. You know, we, we need to have the youth out there. We need to have the younger generation start to take to it and uh and hopefully these guys will have a nice following i mean i know they both have you know tens of thousands of followers on their twitter's accounts and things like that stuff that you you know we don't really do i don't know you guys are you guys tweeting and facebooking and all <laughs> yeah, that yeah who, oh who, yeah who doesn't <laughs> we do it you know bk racing does it i i I want my, I, I refuse to tweet, so, uh, you know, somebody corrupted my thing and sent out about 60 tweets a couple weeks ago, I had to go around and undo it all, but, um, I want my first tweet to be, sitting in victory lane, see picture. <laughs> okay. There you go, I like that idea. You gonna pull a hell junior? You know, I may be an old, old man before it happens, but, uh, but we'll see. Now, we'll, we'll have to see if we can run into you at Martinsville then. We'll be there. Uh, that's a that's an interesting race last year. I don't think there was a car that came out of that track wasn't all dented up. So <laughs> you got to go to the late model race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Devine, we appreciate your time tonight. I know you got other things to do, and we. Okay.
we really enjoyed talking with you, and hopefully we can get back and talk to you again. We're going to snag him and get him back on here. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Anytime, whatever you need, and uh, appreciate you supporting the sport like you guys do down there, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Devine. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye. He's good. He's a talker. Oh, yeah. 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 He's on too. He's a Oh, please. Let's talk racing. How you doing, Lee Pulliam? Doing well. How about you guys? Well, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. I'm wanting to talk to you tonight and get a little... I know you got to be excited about the way your K&N season started. Yeah, um, you know, I was taking a Delph uh, for a season over at New Smyrna. We tested really well down there uh, the day before the race. You had a good hot ride and uh, ended up all fine built. Just had a really, really good race car, you know. We uh, we battled there for a little while, just kind of found a good line. and was running fourth at halfway, and uh, when we came in, we found out um, we had a left rear going down, and uh, didn't have the about nine pounds of air in it at halfway. And um, the officials wouldn't let us change it <clears throat> without going to the rear. So uh, Goss was thinking pretty quick, and it uh, it appeared that we didn't really want to sacrifice all those positions so he put about 30 32 pounds of air in it and uh, <laughs> luckily enough we uh we stayed uh stayed green most of the second half until we had that caution one just a few ago but, uh, you know we still were able to battle that for the lead for a little while and uh then the car finally got to the low on air started hitting the racetrack and just had to kind of hold on at the end now, how did it come about that you got in there with that group with uh, Shigei Hart, uh, Hattoria, whatever his name is? How did you get involved with that program? Uh, I met Bruce Cook at uh, Junior Motorsports a couple years ago when he was there, uh, crew chief in Pocolwit. And um, he's been following me in the late model ranks ever since then. And, um, he got a deal there. He's been bouncing around a little bit. He helped Ron Warren in the last year in the truck series. And, uh, just had an opportunity there. He, he decided to, him and Shiggy was a long time friend and um, he took over as team manager there. And, um, uh, I think, you know, Brett Moffat, he's, he's been very successful there and finished back at the third point. And I think they just kind of went their separate ways and, and uh, Shiggy asked him, he said, if he wanted to have one guy he could put in the car, who would he give a shot to? And, uh, and he gave him my name and, uh, and the, the rest goes from there. So, uh, very thankful. Um, they're working really, really hard to get a shot at doing anything like this. And uh, uh, for him to him to pick me out of everybody that's available now, that means a lot to me. And you got uh, I mean, you got a, you got Randy Goss as your crew chief and everything. I know that's a good thing to have to have that kind of experience around you moving up. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, Randy Goss, um, you know, he's he's been phenomenal, phenomenal, phenom phenomenal in the sport now. Uh, you know, with him and Greg Biffle being in the trucks and uh, nationwide, and, you know, even had some success in the cup level. So, um, Goss is an extremely good guy. He's extremely uh, hard worker. Uh, he's got a, a really good work ethic and, uh, you know, on and away from the racetrack. So, I'm excited about it. He's had success in the Canyon Series with Kyle Larson. Uh, they won a couple races together. So, you know, we keep digging hard. Uh, Nick Hutchins, he's there, crew chief in the other car. He's been uh, bringing a lot to the table too, the new stuff, and um, with the, with the group of guys there at the shop busting their butt, and giving it their all. I think uh, playing, we got some good things hopefully around the corner. Now you since the since the end of last year, you won the you won the national championship, and um, then you got hooked up with Travis Clacker for the big races, and, and and then you went and did some pro cup racing too, right? Yeah, um, Rest is huge, gave me the opportunity to, to, to drive his Pro Cup car and uh, ended up, um, we qualified on, on the front row at all three races that we run, uh, fell out of the first one, um, second one we ended up fifth at, at Hickory and then we come back and uh, led everybody up in the season finale at Southern National. So uh, that was pretty cool to get a, get a first win there in the Pro Cup deal and a big heavy call for a lot of power. Um, that was big for me and then uh, Travis Kiker, he approached me at the end of the year. Well, if I'd be interested in running this stuff, and uh, you know, we we talked for a while, and uh, we found out what would what would work best for both of us. And I tell you, I'm extremely thankful and grateful for that too. You know, that's 
that's been a lot of fun working with those guys. Uh, we were able to win our first race out, first couple races out at Myrtle Beach, and um, you know come real close to winning the season finale at Southern National. So very thankful uh, for that opportunity. He's got uh, great cars, great equipment, and just uh, a really good person to be around. Now you, um, you, you are you going to be doing any late, any more late model racing this year, or are you? Good? I know I, I, the other, I'm, earlier I was talking to you, or you were working on some cars then. Yeah, we. Um, I finished up both my customers' cars, Gary Bunch and uh, GR Walls are going to be running out of the shop this year, and they're going to run late model stock. And uh, um, I'm, I'm still driving for Travis and. Uh, Trying to uh, trying to finish that car up right now, and all three of us are going to Southern National this weekend and, and give it a shot. So I haven't had a chance to test or anything. I, I took both of those guys to the track, but um, you know I think we got a good baseline. We can go on, and hopefully, uh, hopefully all three of us can have a really good run. So is this a a, a full schedule for you in the K and N series? Yeah, we're running a full schedule K and N, and then uh, just running the off weekend. Um, with the late model stock car, so um, those guys were um, very, uh, very ad adamant about me staying in my late model car just to keep it, see time, be, keep keep putting belt, uh, laps under my belt, and uh, you know they they want to be a part of that too. So I think uh, Bruce Cook and some of those guys they come to some of the late model races with us, and uh, you know just uh, Tori wants to be a part of everything. Running the K and N car this year. Uh, this is Mark Wirtz. Running the K and N car this year, do you feel that you'll run the late model here some ahead of time to try possibly get some uh, laps log for you know an opportunity to better your your ride in the K and N car? That's a good possibility. Um, you know, we, we haven't really uh, sat down and discussed exactly what we're going to do. One of the biggest deals for me. Um, you know, like all the, all the short tracks don't really seem to bother me very much. Uh, we've been able to doubt wherever we go, but uh, the road course is probably one of the biggest hurdles I think I'll end up facing. So uh, that's one of the biggest things I want to get seat time in to make sure that I'm a, a 110% for these guys because I don't want to cost as much as the road courses. But it's very uh, is uh, very possible we could we, we may end up in Langley uh, just depending on the schedule. You know. It's, it's an uh, awesome place. It's just uh, with me keeping up these other race cars, and sometimes it's, it's easier for us all because it's the same place. So uh, just a lot going on right now at the shop and uh, trying, to, trying to keep everybody together just to make it a little easier. Well, I think uh, with a driver being as on mark as yourself, uh, you're going to the road course requiring somebody hitting their marks accurately every lap, uh, you're, you're definitely going to be one of the ones I think if anybody can learn, you're going to be able to do it. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. I, uh, you know, it's just, uh, that's just one of the unknowns for me, you know. I, I had the chance to run at Rocket Town Song and uh, Richmond and the Denny Hammond race. So I've got, got some of that bigger track stuff, uh, you know, some of the stuff up to one mile, at least I do have some laps on it. But uh, for me, I just want to make sure I'm 110% at these road courses because I know that's, that's a big hurdle in this uh, championship race. So what what kind of things are you going to do to to prepare yourself for the road course? I mean, are you like practice, practicing online on some uh, simulation, or, or are you taking a class at VIR or anything? I live about five, five minutes from VIR, so we're we're just kind of trying to wait and get a little bit closer to it, and uh, maybe do some stuff out there. You know, I've got a bunch of friends that, that do some road racing, and uh, you know, a bunch of a bunch of race teams around here are pretty big and, and setting up road race cars and stuff. So. Uh, hopefully, I'll end up getting behind the behind the wheel of one of those things, the VIR, and uh, maybe maybe go do a little testing with a couple different people and uh, see what I can pick up on. Well, we appreciate you taking time out to give us a call tonight, and we'll uh, I, next time we'll, we'll we'll try to get you on a little longer for, for um, you mean a little earlier? Yeah, a little earlier, a little <laughs> longer, <laughs> so we can get more in depth with you. Yeah, I, I apologize, guys. I know I'm supposed to be on the tonight. Just got uh, just got caught up in the shop working on the Nike car there, and uh, uh, when I walked out the door, uh, that's just started popping up. So I apologize for that again. I appreciate you guys uh, slipping me in, getting me back home. All right, well, we appreciate you taking time to do it, and uh, I'll get with you soon down there somewhere in one of these racetracks. All right, sounds great. All right, man. Talk to you later. Okay.
I meant to ask him if he was going to try to run the Denny Hamlin race again. I'm sure he will. If he's if it, you know if the schedule works out, because I think the K and N cars are coming to the Richmond. Well, they're at Richmond. Yeah, they're yeah, at Richmond, they're at Richmond, but but they got K, the Hamlin race is going to be a South. But Boston I'm saying I think they're all in the same week, so I don't know if he you know if he's going to do both of them. Uh, yeah, because it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The thing is, things supposed to be Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Hamlin race is Thursday. Yeah. Wednesday and Thursday. We practice on Wednesday, race on Thursday. And then they would normally be racing the K and Ns on Thursday. So that's gonna be tricky. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, they're gonna have the K and N and what else, something else are running Thursday at Richmond. At Richmond? Yeah, you know, aren't I, they running something else? No, I thought it was just K and N. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. Just K and N. I wish they bring the trucks back. Yeah, it used to be nice when they had all three of them, but no, they uh, weren't selling tickets very well. So. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't have well, the Hamlin race. The K and N. I thought they, had, but I thought they had a second. Uh, but I'm sure it doesn't cost nearly as much as it costs. Was it, was truck it, is it modified? Gonna be that's, there? that's what I thought. It might be the modified. Yeah, the, uh, Northern modifies and Wheeling modifies or whatever. Take Chris for Donnie Lee and all them guys. Well, we'll find out and have it for next show. You going to take go out and visit Martinsville for the Martinsville race? Uh, we may. Depends on the season, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling here. I'm not going there. If we're running well. We'll go. Uh, right now, you know, our focus is uh, what's at hand. And uh, Just you know, your program. Well, it's like everybody's saying. You know, the new NASCAR spec motor is coming by June, July. You know, we what are you going to do? You know, why are you going to spend money on a new program? Well, if you wait till June, July to get a program going, you're behind the eight ball. You got. And unfortunately, yeah. in the sport we're doing, you got to race for right now. And uh, if the rules change next week, then we'll deal with that next week. But right Which now, do you think they would change the rules in the middle of the season? You think the I local think they would break, make you enforce it? Well, if NASCAR, it's not that they they would make have you know have to enforce it. They would bring it in. They would phase it in and make it optional. The problem is, as soon as somebody gets one, yeah, and good. and it's beating everybody, there's no longer optional. Right. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's on, so they might be on that train. You know, it's like here. You know, nobody made you buy one, but if you want to run good, then you gotta get one. So, but that's something you don't worry about right now. You know, you only worry about what you can control, and yeah. uh, and uh, you t you handle what's at bay right now. What'd you think of everybody we had on the show tonight? It was a great show. I've never, I like Mr. Divine. I talked to him a couple times today, and he he was. Yeah, he's really cool. When when I was when he called in, and uh, when we were talking to Joey, it was getting all the information on you guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, who was it? Who was it that did that a few months ago? He remembered our name. We're like, how did they do that? And he's like, well, he asked me before he went on. He wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. See, we're getting notoriety. Hey. Well, I had talked to him, and he, you know, he, when I talked to him this morning, yeah. he was getting ready to go to a meeting. He said, well, I don't have time to talk right now, but I'll get back with you. And I said, well, I ain't going to hear nothing from him. He ain't, you know, he's a big deal. I ain't going to hear nothing from him. And this afternoon, out of the clear blue sky, the phone rings. And, hey, I'm calling you back. I, what, when do you want to do this? And I said, no, this is up to you. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> to, it's up to you when you want to do it. And... Uh, <laughs> But I mean, there there have been times we run into time situations, you know, and you'll say, okay, I got a time slot for you here, and usually well, he, they go he for was it. talking about not even doing it this Wednesday to start yeah. off with. Oh, okay. And we'll, we'll have to get him back on and get him at well, like we did this time. We were supposed to be the last one. We could have kept on going, mm -hmm. except for poor Lee. Well, well, we could yeah, have I just kicked Lee to. Yeah, no, um, we, you got any sponsors? Anything you want to think? Where you got the last? You wasn't let you have the last word. <laughs> well, obviously we want to keep America running on Dunkin'. You know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Taylor Waste Disposal, Durgloss, uh, CMIT Solutions, Bayport Credit Union, uh, Bel Air Fifty Five, and my team. It's uh, couldn't do it without any of them. Now, how many guys you got on your team? We have five, and uh, they, it's grown over the years from just guys that were helping to family. So. You know, we got together for a team cookout Sunday for the rain delay, and uh, <laughs> 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 we woke up to a wear, you know, so I, I, had, I had some friends, they were DVRing it, you know, going to catch it later on, and they said the thing was so long, 
that the DVR had already shut off by the time it actually started. Yeah. And then I think I, only other thing I can say is, you know, if anybody wants to follow us during the race season, they can tweet, you know, Mark Works 55. Or, Mark, uh, Mark is an active tweeter. I know, I'm, I'm, I follow him. Or, uh, you know, pick us up on our racing page at Mark Works Racing on Facebook. I do that we do. too. We do that too. So, I try to keep it accurate and I try to watch Next up, Wednesday, we're so. going to be here and uh, if you want to swing by with some donuts, you since you forgot <laughs> tonight. Do you live close by? I actually live in Virginia Beach. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's only about 25 minutes. Well, my girlfriend lives in Ventress, so that's why I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right over by Angie's restaurant. So. Oh, yeah. Angie's is good, though. Yeah. Now, your shop is what? Just you said down on Wyth Creek? Down uh, here? 57 Pocosin? Wyth Creek Road. That's correct. Heading into Pocosin. Of course, everybody knew it used to be the uh, Ross Auto Parts right across from Anna's Pizza, but. Uh, uh, so it's not the junkyard's not there anymore? Oh, it was never junkyard. It was junkyard. It was all, used all <laughs> the Salvage yard. Salvage yard. So, it's junkyard. Yeah. Uh, junk but uh, Copart has bought that. And uh, okay. the corner lot that the Colonel owned, uh, he sold to Dollar General, which is now getting ready to open. So, uh, you've been know. around Langley for a long time, haven't you? Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't know him real yeah, well. Yeah, Chamble is those late models. Uh, years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been an active supporter in some way or fortune. Uh, uh, yeah, his son him. used to race. They would race late models, uh, and uh, silently behind the scenes, the Colonel supports the track. All the stay dry that uh, you see the crew still at, the Colonel buys and keeps the uh, track supplied with stay dry each year. And uh, he's just, uh, I'll tell you, when he uh, passes away, a, a true admiral to the sport will be gone. Uh, he, he not only loves it, he, he not only watches it, but he supports it and spends his own money to have a car in it. So he, uh, another... There's not many guys like that anymore, or, or, or as many, it seems like. Well, you know, it's every year I start the year wondering if this is my last year, and, and I've managed to accomplish enough to where I've, I've appreciated everything I've done, and, mm -hmm. and I appreciate, you know, if this is the last year, and, and with no regrets or, or no anger you know this man has been over backwards to keep me in racing i couldn't do it without him and uh I did that take a big thing off your off your plate when when you sold the team and just drove it took a lot off my my shoulders because you know you found yourself racing with your pocketbook and when you get start racing with your pocketbook it's still fun to a point but it, it takes a lot it, you know it's hard. you're smiling in front of your team but then you know, when you drive home at night you're you're like man and uh, or if you crunch something, yeah, you know, we always managed to have good motors. Um, uh, and Charlie High built motors for me back then, and uh, Apple's Auto Parts built motors for me back then. And uh, you know, it's but the problem was I was spending my whole year's racing fun on getting that motor. Yes, we could go to the track and run up front, but if we didn't finish in the top four, we didn't have enough money to be back the next week, and then it got to be. You're robbing your house payment, or your something was suffering. And robbing Peter, robbing Peter to pay Paul. It, it got to where I just said, you know, I can't do it. And I was fortunate. I've been very fortunate. I, th there's just no two ways about it. I mm -hmm. mean, Rogers helped me in the years past, years ago, and it's just got everybody along with Donnie was, Harris. <laughs> <Let me stop. laughs> Donnie Harris. I mean, uh, you know, you, you don't ever forget a bridge you crossed, and you know, Donnie Harris for years behind the scenes kept me going and with either support with technology or or with uh, material items and uh, Bill Diggs you know Bill Diggs stepped in never been to a racetrack and uh, he was giving us paint and uh, one day I asked him you know why don't you come hang out with us in the pits just to uh, truly just to get him to the racetrack and uh, it turned into uh, what's now a 16 year relationship of somebody that has sunk thousands of his own dollars into the team and it's stuff like that that it's just I've, I've been very fortunate and I appreciate everything that's happened. Good deal. Well once again don't forget about our friends out at Mid-Atlantic NASCAR. So everybody enjoyed it, had a good time. You like that little quick? I, I, I saw it that time. <laughs>
<laughs> it's gonna take him a little while. He's a little slow sometimes. Yeah. And, and so you know, hey, you know hey, anybody that ever pulled in early in a race so they get in front to to do some kids race? Here we go. Here we go. Or Martin. <laughs> hey, that's something you got coming on somebody. He was telling me the other week that he used to pull in and let twenty-three of twenty-five. <laughs> I was, you know, were you leaving? <laughs> no, no, no. I was. Mar Martin didn't leave. But, yeah, right. you, met, you know, Southampton, they used to have the, the kids' yeah. rides. Yes. The kids' rides. Okay. He was excited about that. I learned a lesson on that at Dixieland. Oh, yeah? And they did a, a fan appreciation night one year. And we were winning a bunch of races down there. And then when they let them fans to the. I had my car out in front of the straightaway. The fans went to the car they wanted. And you made it two laps around the racetrack. Yep. Our two laps were right before our feature race, uh -oh. and uh, <laughs> I had so oh, many kids and people in my car in the floorboard, sitting in what is the back would have been the back window, using the back dash area as a seat. I got to turn two, and I heard two, <laughs> and I was like, huh? I had so much weight on the car, the defenders were cutting right, they cut right through the two more tires. Oh, man. So there was uh, $300 worth of the Hoosiers gone. I had to run to the truck, get mounted up before we could run the race, but uh, don't pull in her. <laughs> <laughs> we love our fans. Uh, I, told, I told your, fa your favorite friend, Faith, that you were going to be on tonight. How's she doing? She's doing all right. That's good. I told her we were going to all go down there after the show. She's... <laughs> Good times. Oh, yes. Anywho. Well, Mark, we enjoyed having you here tonight as our little guest host. Glad I can make it and wave with this hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I can do this. <laughs> and come back again. I'm feel really glad to. Just, I really enjoy you being here because being with Scott all the time is fun. <laughs> it's fun good. <laughs> Tell you what, maybe we'll hook up and get Al back in here. Al's usually in here about 50% of the time on the show. Uh, another guy who's, uh, I'll tell you what. Believe it or not, Al Pierce pushed my career along. Uh, Al Pierce actually uh, was responsible for getting me in the Infield Media Center at Daytona and being part of a press conference uh, with uh, it was me, Justin Labonte, uh, Clint Boyer, uh, Jim Hunter, and uh, Ted Christopher. And uh, those, you know, those are memories you can't buy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, right. You know, I'm on the stage in Daytona with the backdrop. With a microphone talking to the world, and Al Pierce was responsible for that, so that's pretty cool. You know, Al, Al's done a lot for my career. Now, you, too. now you're doing it all again, talking to the world. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> yeah, now you're you going to start thanking me and Jack. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because we've got we've got over two. Hope it's not thanking these guys for the end of my career. Now we've got we've so, got over two million over two million views now on the, on the shows. That's awesome. So, it's it's beginning hey, to even with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling an anchor. I'll tell you what, if he don't start doing something with them lights that reflects the back. Now wait a minute, minute. I was supposed to say we like having you. Let's do a light show now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come over and rub hey, some of my bad luck. I'm going for a reason. <laughs> okay. I mean, come, every time I wear hands, I like, didn't even tell him to say it. That's what's good. <laughs> well, I was picking up on what you're laying down. So yeah. I, mean, I didn't even say anything. That was good. <laughs> oh, no, I, I do miss when we were doing it in the trailer because I had lights mounted across and cameras mounted up and everything else. Did it get cold out there? Well, it didn't help when somebody broke in the trailer and stole everything. Oh, yeah. So. Well, we are in hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got special locks on it now. It, it, the, the hasp is only about this wide and it goes to the big, huge hunker thing. You know, it's a I circle. had to get those for our race trailer. It's a military lock. Yeah. I mean, when it closes, it has a casting around the body of the lock that covers the pins. As somebody broke in our race trail and stole all radios and stuff like that. So. Yeah. You can't handle them anymore. Anyway. Yeah. That must have been in Hampton, too. That's in Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> Could be worse. Could have had your whole trailer stolen. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll catch everybody back next week on our show. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. driver of the 
33 NASCAR late model. 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear, Butler Built Seats, Bell Helmets, Hooker Harness Seat Belts, number 90.